Espinoza, do you by any chance know what time your 9.30 shift starts? 9.30? <laughs> See, that's what I would have said. But then I had Ted stand out in the parking lot and monitor your arrival times this week. Ted? 9.34, 9.39, 9.41, 9.33, 9.50. How is that law degree working out for you, Ted? I was going to be a senator. I haven't perused the latest nursing contract, but I'm guessing it doesn't say show up when you damn well please. Oh, hey, Bob, here's an idea. What say you stop showing up altogether? We'll just replace you with the giant time clock. Oh, and if we ever get to missing you, we'll just have a tiny little Bob Kelso cuckoo bird pop out every couple of minutes and say, I've never satisfied a woman. I've never satisfied a woman. I've never satisfied a woman. <laughs> Come on, Ted. Even though Dr. Cox still didn't know he was the father of Jordan's baby, they were getting along better than ever. Love you. I love you. As for us, it was the end of our second year, and somehow each day had begun to feel the same. Somewhere far away from here. You see, after a while, your residency boils down to just a few things. Paperwork. The three prescriptions every patient gets. Give Miss Allen a seat a minute for her headache, restful social sleep, and totally social poop. Paperwork. Mind-numbing monotony. And of course, paperwork. As for the patients, uh, look, Mr. Groff, because it's diabetes related, the pain in your foot isn't responding to painkillers. But I'd like to try an anti seizure medication before we even consider amputation. Oh, good. Because I have an audition for Stomp tomorrow. Look, just cut the damn thing off, will you? I guess that's why I'm so psyched our college buddy Spence was coming to town. Jill Anderson? Yes. Yes. No. Monica Meyer? Yeah. Yes. You know, guys, I don't think it's really appropriate for us to be rehashing our college sexual conquest with Carla in the other room. Leslie Stevens. Yes! On a pile of coats with hundreds of people around. What a whore! Who else? Who else did you bang? Carla, college wasn't all sex and coats. Friends here got me through a lot of hard times. Why don't you just moose the crap out of it? Straight up. Yes. My life changed that day. Man, that was a long time ago. I mean, now you two are engaged, mm. and I'm in town because our frat brothers, Spitty and Dan, are getting married. A double wedding? No. Mm -mm. Oh, good for the boys. The point is, we've really grown up. Ah! Oh, that's good, good sauce. Check it out. Free pitcher. What I've got you on is D5 half normal saline with 20 kcl at 100 cc's an hour. This is the Cadillac of all hangover cures. It feels warm in my tummy. Good morning, angels. What'd you have, one too many daiquiris last night? Spence, this is Dr. Cox and... Don't bother, don't care. Oh, oh, right, yeah, he's the scary man you told me about last night. Hey, congratulations. For what, jackass? You just had a baby. No, 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 she just had a baby. Yeah, but you said it was his. And you said something else. That he didn't know it yet. That's exactly right. <laughs> Holy crap. Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. I can't do this all on my own. No, I know. I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Okay, he hasn't said a word in over ten minutes. Ah, the hell with it. I'm going in. Dr. Cox. Newbie, if the next two words out of your mouth aren't see you, then the third word will be, oh my god, my crotch. You've punched me in the crotch. See ya. How about that guy? Yeah. That guy? Yeah, you know what? Maybe it would just be easier if I told you whose butt I haven't had my fingers in. Now, that's one of the perks you never hear about. You guys pretty much landed your dream jobs, huh? Dream job. I'm the candy man. Mm. Who can take a sunrise? Mm. Mm. Hey, man. How am I supposed to finish this memo? Mm. Do you at least have any interesting patients? Oh, there's Mr. Weinberg, who has dementia, but still enjoys his ronking. What's oh, ronking? Ronk! Interesting. Hey, sweetness. Ronk. Hey, so uh, when do people get to yell like stat and stuff? Kinda never. Bambi. Rounds. Oh, damn it! Run, Johnny! Run! Just trying to add a little drama. I felt it. This is not a good day to be late. <gasps> Every year at this time, Kelso picks a resident to ride mercilessly until they crumble. The key is to jump on any easy question and impress him early. All right, shall we get started? Yes! Excuse me. Should we get started? Answer yes. Wow. Dr. Reed, do an ABG on bed four without waking him. Mm hmm Dr. Uh, uh, young Asian fellow, bed seven needs a central line. And Dr. Murphy and Dr. Eager Beaver, step forward. 
This is it. Last man standing. What are the four differential diagnoses of the persistent ST elevation on any EKG? Dorian. Ischemia. Murphy. Aneurysm. Dorian. Pericarditis. Murphy. Pass. Ah, Doug. At least you're going to a more chocolatey place. Dr. Murphy. (laughs) Dr. Reed. A moment, please. No, you didn't. I did. And now every time I turn around, Dr. Kelso's riding me. I've got next. What's up? No one? Self five. For the big dog. Look, Elliot, I've seen this before. Kelso starts to worry he's not scary anymore, so he picks somebody to be his bitch. Who he picks is totally random. You know, unless you throw a needle in his face. Okay, I didn't tell you that the kid was yours and you're upset. I get it. But you seem to be making a really big deal out of this. Is there something else that's bothering you? It's mostly just the kid thing. Ugh. I told you I didn't want you to feel pressured to be with me. I didn't want you to feel manipulated. Jordan, I am so so, 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 so sorry. But no matter what you say, you don't have a leg to stand on. Yeah, I don't know about that, Perry. Sounds to me like she's trying to protect your relationship. Yeah, I mean, some people's mothers say the only way to get a guy to marry is by using pregnancy as a trap. But the stupid mothers who got even meaner when they stopped drinking. Morning. I make more than you do. Uh, What? I saw your paycheck and I've been dying to tell you I make more than you do. Quite a bit more. You couldn't have seen my paycheck. Right, because there's no way I could access the personnel file. Just impossible. By the way, uh, 987-65-4320. That's my social security number. No, that's your PIN number. No, my PIN number is 3674. Bingo. Do you have any idea what it feels like to have a janitor make more money than you? Johnny, investment banker. So no. Why, Christopher? Hey, so I saved up like 500 bucks. Where would you put that if you were me? I don't know. A wallet, a money clip? Hey, you can get Schmitty and Dan a wedding gift. Dan wants a ferret. Oh, ferrets are nice. They're mean. Guys, what do you say we go do something special tonight, huh? My treat. We gotta kinda lay low tonight, because we're on backup call. Backup call. See, now this is the proper way to lay low. I mean, honestly. Does it get any better? (laughs) No, it does not. Keep looking at me like that. People! Ed! Did you turn on the jets in the hot tub? No! It's too hot on my eyes! Those sutures look awful, don't you think, Ted? I don't know, sir. Yes, no, I'm barely here. I know what you're doing, sir. The whole keep us scared thing. (laughs) I'm okay with it. Dr. Reed... Even if you hadn't just missed blinding me earlier, I still would have picked you to crap on. See, you're easily startled, you're constantly overwhelmed, and while you work as hard as anyone here, you're still struggling to break into the middle of the pack. I chose you because I am hoping that you will ask yourself, really ask yourself, if there isn't some other profession you might be better suited for. In the meantime, be a doll and resuture that wound. Mm. Want to get a beer later? I can't believe you didn't tell me. And while we're coming completely clean, Perry, I'm not actually the girl they're singing about in my Sharona. Her name's Sharona. You making jokes? I just want this to be okay. Sure, don't get me wrong. I want to be with the kid. I'm I'm damn sure I'm going to be with the kid. But as far as you and I go, I just don't see us working out. I'm like drinking cold beers in a jacuzzi, am I right, Ed? Hell, some days I just sit out here for hours on end, downing cold one after cold one. What do you do when you have to pee? So your boys are doctors, huh? Okay, yeah, well, ready. <laughs> that was my ass. <laughs> you guys have to go to work? Nah, it's just a stupid intern. Besides, uh, the only way we'd have to go in if there was some kind of catastrophe. In breaking news, there's been a multiple car pileup on the thruway. Ooh. Plus, the two guys on call would have to be, like, simultaneously incapacitated. <laughs> This is my chance to shine. What's up, Chica? Part of being a doctor is learning to deal with the unexpected. Whether it's someone who won't take no for an answer. Yeah, I decided not to accept the whole being dumb thing. I'm just going to hang around to you. Forgive me. Or being shaken to your very core. Oh, no! Of course, sometimes it's just having to work in wet grundies. Hey, Billy. Hey, Roma. Oh, what the hell? You're only 40 minutes late. 
Do I, do I smell beer? Oh, we, we, uh, we had a few. Newsflash. You can't drink and then come to work. You're not airline pilots. Look, Dr. Cox. No, you look. If someone had asked me just this morning, is there any way that I could have any less respect for you two geniuses? I would have said, no, no, that's not possible. But lo and behold, you went and pulled it off. Congratulations. The only problem is I'm, I'm fresh out of blue ribbon. So instead, you're going to have to settle for a lifetime supply of my foot up your ass. Now go home. You're not fit to work tonight. Great speech. You guys are in trouble. Wait up. I got my heels on. <laughs> After what happened, I was in no mood to be messed with. Hey, food stamps. A little anonymous donation from a guy who makes a little more scratch than you. You know what? At least what I do matters, okay? You're cleaning the same spot you were this morning, and the smart money says you'll be cleaning it again tomorrow. So why don't I just come by then, and you can tell me how what you do day after day makes even the slightest bit of difference in this world. Too mean. I don't care if I hurt his feelings, because I got absolutely crushed tonight. Luckily, Turk and I both knew who was responsible for all this. Crockett. Tubbs. When do we eat? Mm. Look, Jordan, could you just give me ten seconds to myself here? Mm, no. Uh, oh, you know, you are being very immature, and oh my god, is that guy on fire? Dr. Cox! I'm so glad you're here. Oh, from one hell to another. Dr. Kelso's been torturing me lately, and I really thought that I could handle it. I mean, after all, I've come a long way, you know. For instance, I used to be afraid of you, and now I can talk to you about anything. Like how your hair's been looking particularly springy lately, and not like the season, but more like inside of a mattress, you know what I mean? I don't have any clue what you mean. Dr. Kelso's starting to get to me, and I don't think I can take it anymore. Sorry, kid, but I'm kind of dealing with my own stuff right now. Thanks a lot. Really. <laughs> Mop top. Oh, God. Man, why'd you even show up this weekend? What are you talking about? I'm the one who introduced Schmitty and Dan. Okay. I didn't really introduce them, but I'm the one who accidentally saw them under the foosball table. Oh, Schmitty. Typical Spence. You just blow into town and get us in a bunch of trouble. What? I made you guys go out tonight? Hey, I have a venture capital presentation Thursday. Ask me if I want to go out drinking Wednesday night. You want to actually oh, sorry, know. sorry. I can't. I have a presentation. You see, the truth is, you guys have been complaining about work since the second I got here, just dying for an excuse to blow it off. So maybe you should stop being all mad at me when really, you're just pissed because you hate your jobs. Every time I turn around, Kelso's there. Ted, he's trying to break my spirit. I mean, do you have any idea what that feels like? Oh, I'm sorry, of course you do. Dr. Reed, I'm afraid that nothing you've described constitutes harassment. Swing and a miss, eh, Dr. Reed? Well, the next time you decide to make a stink over nothing, maybe you should see a lawyer who didn't need five tries to pass the bar exam. I have stress-induced dyslexia, and you know that, Dr. Oslek. Why are you doing this? I'll tell you why I'm doing this, Perry. Because we've been dancing the same annoying dance for years now. One of us gets angry and walks away, and the other person's too stubborn to go after them. Before you know it, you're sleeping with some toothpick-sized pharmaceutical rep, and I'm trying to convince my mom that the thing in my suitcase is a giant electric melon baller. Well, guess what? Things are different now. We have a kid together. I'm not going home until you promise that you're coming home with me. You go home. I'll meet you there later. Bring dinner. Your father, can you believe it? a lot of sleep thinking about what Spence had said. <sighs> look, I'm sorry I was such a jerk yesterday, okay? I mean, come on, look at this floor. You could practically eat off of it. Would you? What I want? Would you eat off the floor? As I bent down to eat that peppered floor turkey, unaware that the cleanser the janitor uses is an extremely potent diuretic, I realized something. Uh. The reason we're doctors is because we have an innate desire to help people. That was disgusting. And you have to have that desire, because at the end of your second year, it's impossible to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it becomes about perseverance. And fortitude. And sacrifice. And 
sorry, you guys can't make the wedding. Yeah, I'll give those guys a big kiss for us. Don't forget to tell them that the ferret only eats fresh vegetables. I'm gonna miss you guys. <laughs> I'll see you later. later, dude. Really, all you can hope for is just an occasional thank you. I'm so glad the medication worked on your foot. So I'm supposed to be happy because somebody finally did something right? You're welcome. Nice call on the any secret medicine there, newbie. You know, I'm actually starting to think you may not be the worst resident that ever lived. <laughs> How cool is that? Shut up. You shut up. You're an angry man. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the whole it's your baby thing. We'll probably talk about that later. You know, I, I wasn't even mad at Jordan. No? Oh, I was scared. In fact, I was freaking out all day because I'm quite confident that I'm going to be an absolutely horrible father. You? Come on. You're going to be a very scary father. I mean, a, a great you're going to be a great father. Like last night, you totally kicked our asses because we deserved it. And do you remember that time you told me I wasn't the worst resident that ever lived? You mean like eight seconds ago? You have no idea how much that meant to me. Hmm. I said, I think you may not be the worst resident ever, but I can't be sure of stuff like that. Come on, I haven't done the appropriate legwork. But Dr. Cox, you're always there and we need you. I think you have this fathering thing down. Why am I not leaving, Dr. Reed? Because I don't want to miss you breaking down and weeping in front of everyone. Oh, here it comes. Great big tears, Ed. Great big crocodile tears. See, if she was your daughter, you'd totally know how to handle it. Go ahead and leave. Go ahead and You're doing fine there, Barbie. Thank you. Everybody have a good one. Go home, see my son. Excuse me there, Bobo. Okay. To my brilliant feet. may come up tomorrow. Next week, how the world went mad for the Osbournes. Catch up with them in Malibu at 9.30. But coming up, Graham Norton, and he's got the particulars next. Next.